Does anyone got any questions about the video before we begin? Okay, fantastic. So a little bit of history about the building. So back in 1859, working class men met up in a pub. And together they wanted to help the working class and poorer communities in Liverpool. Because back in those days, paupers' burials were quite a common occurrence. So that meant unmarked or mass graves if people couldn't afford a dignified burial. So these nine men founded the Liverpool Liver Burial Society. Now, being a member of the society, then people could make flexible payments. They could be weekly or monthly instalments, and there were no set premiums, so people could just pay whatever they could afford. As long as they were paying into the society, they were guaranteed a payout upon their death towards a dignified burial. But if we fast forward to 1856, they changed their name to the Royal Live Friendly Society. They wanted a name that was a bit more cheerful than the Burial Society because they became what we know today as a life insurance company and they ventured out to different parts of the UK like Wales, Scotland and London so it just made sense for them to take Liverpool out of the name. But in 1907 they had over 6,000 employees working for them across the UK and they needed a new headquarters and they thought where better to have that headquarters than here where it all began in Liverpool. So they bought the land on the pier head and that is how the building is here today. But the architect was a local man. He was just over the water in Birkenhead. His name was Walter Aubrey Thomas. And he was quite a successful man. He designed a lot of listed buildings around the city. So obviously there's the line building. And there's also the tower building that's over the road from us. Kind of looks like a lovely modern day castle. That's one of his works as well. But despite all of his success, he was known for his modesty and he was really humble. So he got offered a knighthood for his work and he politely turned it down. He just wanted to be left alone in peace to get on with his job. Quite shy, quite reserved, so very little to his But we know he took a lot of inspiration from the New York Star. And his main inspiration of one he was don't look anything alike, they look completely different, so it was more the way it was built rather than how it looked which inspired him. So if you put the Ingalls building, without being, without boring you too much of all the architectural terms, so it was the first building in the world to have a steel enforced concrete structure, so that meant steel enforced concrete and then granite cladding around, it was a technique called the Hedebeek principle and that is the same method that was used for this building as well. But speaking of that American influence, you might be aware that Liverpool is often used by film production companies to replicate New York, and they like this building because of that New York influence. So, most famously, we have Batman on top of the building, filming for his latest film. He was kind of getting dangled off the edge of the building in the wind, so it didn't really envy him where that was concerned. But from what we've been told, it's a lot cheaper to film here than in New York, so that's why they prefer Liverpool. But as I say, on the exterior of the building is granite cladding, and it was originally believed to be Norwegian granite. That is partially true, and the reason I say partially is because geologists have visited the building in recent years, and they've confirmed some of the granite does come from Norway, but half of it comes from Aberdeen in Scotland as well. So when they first opened, they thought Norwegian granite sounded quite fancy and exotic, but it started getting a bit too expensive to import, so they started importing from Aberdeen instead. Hey, the building's still standing today, that's all that matters. They clearly do the same job. And to be honest as well, you'd have to be a geologist to tell the difference between the two, so we don't really mind. But in 1908, the foundation stone was laid and that marked the beginning of construction. And amazingly, after just three years, the building finished construction in 1911 and opened with the doors. And when you consider the lack of equipment back in those days, three years is pretty incredible to finish a building like this. Has anyone got any questions so far, folks? No? Great stuff, okay. So we're going to get a lift up to the 10th floor. We're going through this corridor to my left. You can see a timeline of photographs as we walk through. There's a picture of the construction workers in the early stages, and you'll definitely see that back in those days, health and safety just didn't really exist. So no hard hats, no high-vis jackets. It was flat caps, three-piece suits. You wouldn't see that on a building site today, that's for sure. But when you're ready, come follow me this way. 